Greetings everybody, it's only from a page to ink, and today I will be doing my favorite Friday jar drawing thing. So I gotta stick my head in here. Hopefully, I can pull out a thing. Now I'm gonna talk about it. Hopefully it's a good one. Not something that's going to take a whole ton of thought on it. Gateway books! Like gateway drugs, only good for you and not drugs. It's a great, great simile, metaphor, analogy thing there. Alright, so, gateway books. What I mean by gateway books, or what I meant when I wrote it down by gateway books, are books that got me into reading. Because there are periods where I can remember reading and then it's just blank, and then I remember reading again, and then like not much for a while, and then I was reading more again. So this is me kind of sharing with you guys and talking about the different books that have opened me up to reading. Um, the first thing that I can remember reading is a tiny chapter book called Christina's Ghost. Um, like reading myself, something I picked up to read and not like somebody reading to me or like I had to read it for school. And it's actually right here. So it's Christina's Ghost by Betty Run White and it's about a girl who goes to stay with her uncle in this old house. And I forgot why she's there. I think it was just something that she ended up doing for the summer. Um, but when she's there, she um, encounters this little boy ghost and he's like trying to warn her about something and there ends up being like this really big evil like power up in the attic and Christina has to help the little boy and it kind of helps her to grow because when the book starts out she's kind of a chicken it's kind of like spirited away only instead of you know, finding a way to save her parents and to get out of the bathhouse, it's more like she, um, you know, saves a little boy and is ready to, uh, get out of the house. And it actually also helps her relationship with her uncle, which is really nice. And I didn't know that Betty Wren Wright also wrote The Dollhouse Murders, which is another one of the books that I picked up after- well, actually, eventually. It wasn't a gateway book, but that is another book that I do remember picking up because I wanted to read it. At the school I went to, there actually wasn't a whole lot of, like, paranormal fiction, and I think that's what really started to make me read. Like, there was a whole lot of non-fiction or historical fiction, I was like, ugh, I'm already at school, I don't want to read, you know, something academic. I want to read something interesting. So, um, this was when I was in, like, first grade, so I was actually at a different school than the one I'm currently talking about. Um, and after this, I remember reading The Bailey School Kids, so, like, Mermaids Don't Run Track, and it's like, Vampires Don't Eat Pasta. No. Was it Vampires Don't Play Basketball? No, Leprechauns Don't Play Basketball. I don't remember, but it was it was those stories. So like there was a character and these kids were like, this character's kind of weird. And then they like kind of find out or they, I don't remember if they find out if that's an actual thing or if it's just what they think is happening. Um, but that like this mystical creature exists within their environment, which I don't remember if that was entirely true or if it was just their imaginations running away with them, kind of like in Rugrats, how they go on these grand adventures. Like the show, not the movies, because in the movies they're always getting into trouble. But in the shows, um, you know, it was mostly just in their heads. It was their imagination. There. So Christina's Ghost is probably the biggest gateway book because it's the thing that started to get me reading. So I remember reading Bailey's School Kids and Magic Treehouse, um, which they, I think they are still making Magic Treehouse books. And I stopped reading probably halfway through it because either I stopped reading at that time or I kind of like outgrew the books and I wasn't as interested in them anymore. Um, but I also remember reading Dollhouse Murders which I do remember involved, like, I think it was either a haunted house or just like a haunted dollhouse. And she like found this dollhouse up in the attic and started to play with it. She was realizing that like 
things would move on their own in the house and like I think weird things started to happen inside the house as things were happening in the dollhouse um, but it's been a while I don't remember exactly um, another book that I do remember reading at some point before I really got into like YA for example um, was a book called Goodnight Gracie which was about a girl and like her best friend and they wanted to get into show business like theater if I remember correctly again it's been a while I think I read this maybe in the fourth or fifth grade and that was in 2004 2005 so it's been over 10 years bear with me um but it, they wanted to do show business and I believe her best friend gets in a car accident and dies and it's just kind of like sad but it also has like a happy ending like they learn to kind of live for themselves because they started trying to live for their friend or they wanted to honor their best friend and I don't, I don't really remember but I do remember that much and it was just kind of like oh that's sad I'll put this up here um, another thing that I do remember reading at some point in time was um, chicken soup books well books specifically there's one book that I actually still have I think it's down here behind me somewhere or over on the other side um, but it was called Chicken Soup for the Girl's Soul, and it had, like, girl, pre teen teen stories. Um, just about everyday stuff. There were a couple that, like, hurt my heart, because it was about, there was a couple about losing your best friend, like, they died or moved away and didn't keep contact or something, and it was just kind of, it really hit home, because for as long as I can remember, like, I've had best friends, and then either I moved or they moved, and we just lost touch and I was like huh and then I moved here and I had a best friend and she was my best friend for probably 10 years um, and I remember reading these and going I don't ever want to lose her and spoiler alert we're not really friends anymore and sometimes I miss her and sometimes because I know who she's become kind of like through pictures and talking to people that know her, I just, I don't think we'd be friends anymore. She's a completely different person. Uh, anyway, moving away from the dark subjects and going into the lighter subjects. Um, yeah, so there's those. And then the books that started to get me back into reading again when I was a little older was actually, now that I think about it, there was a break between like novels where I got into graphic novels, and by graphic novels I mean manga from Japan. So I read a whole lot of that, like Hanakimi, and it was a lot of shoujo, which is like the girly, chick flicky type manga. So it was like Hanakimi and um, Lovely Complex. Lovely Complex and Hanakimi were probably my favorites. Um, I have. Uh, wild ones in my manga shelf cabinet over there. Um, there's High School Debut that was really good. Gentleman's Alliance Cross. Um, Dengeki Daisy. I'm trying to remember like all the manga I read. The one that got me started to read manga though was a manga called Kanpai, which if I remember correctly um, was about like a vampire and like a human and they were friends and he would like let her suck his blood for some reason that was just kind of it was it was the story that really interests me but for some reason that's all i can remember about it um at least i think that's what it was called was kanpai i could be wrong but again this is over 10 years ago um trying to think what else there's a lot that i really really liked um and then in middle school, I think what started to get me back into reading like paranormal fiction again was a book series called The Darkest Powers, which is by um, Kelly Armstrong. And I know I've talked about them before. I'm pretty sure I've like showed them and they were one of the things that got me back into reading. Because it's about a girl, well not because it's about a girl named Chloe, but it's about a girl named Chloe. Um, and she goes to this art school and she wants to be a director, but, uh, the day that she goes to school and the story starts, she gets her period, and, like, which is a rare thing in YA because apparently periods are, like, taboo, um, but she gets her period and then it turns out that she actually has these 
abilities and when that when her period starts it kind of also kickstarts her power and she starts to see ghosts she's a necromancer um, but she doesn't know that she's um, to cover it up she was pretty much called schizophrenic and put into a group home with a bunch of other kids that supposedly have problems um, similar to hers not schizophrenia but there's like somebody who's supposedly an arsonist or not an arsonist um, a paramaniac there's somebody with mood swings, like bipolar disorder. Um, bipolar disorder, not mood swings, because those are different. Um, I think there was another one that just had like anger issues. She threw things, but it was all a cover up. The pyromaniac is actually like a fire demon. The, the girl with bipolar is just a witch who might actually have bipolar disorder. Um, but that's not the specific reason for her being there. Um, and there's also two boys. Well, there's three boys. One of them ends up leaving early. I think like right before she got there. So there's actually two boys. Um, but Simon and Derek. And then there's Tori, who's the witch. There's Rochelle, who um, goes by Ray, And she's the fire demon. And there's Liz, who's like a telekinetic half-demon or something, and Chloe, who's a necromancer. Um, and she kind of slowly starts to puzzle this together with help of Simon and Derek, because they kind of start to hint to her that, hey, there's something going on here more than you think there is, and they plan this big escape, because it turns out that they're like the products of experimentation from when they were babies. Um, which was supposed to have a good cause, but it kind of like had the adverse effect instead of making their powers weaker so they could blend in with normal humans and made them stronger. But I really, really, really enjoyed the series and I've actually reread re it again more recently and I still really enjoy it. Um, one of the things I love most about the series is the fact that Chloe is not a perfect character at all. And that's what I like about her, because like so many books, like the character maybe has one or two flaws. She like messes up all the time and she does things and you're sitting here like, why? Why would you do that? But it's because she's a flawed character and we are not perfect people. Humans are not perfect. So the fact that she's so flawed just it makes the story more interesting. You know, she tries. She does. Which is, you know, important. Um then following the darkest powers was a book called Paranormalcy, as well as the Twilight series behind me that I did really enjoy when I read them. I didn't see anything really weird until the movies came out and more people started to read them and talk about them, and it kind of came to... Well, I never really liked Edward to begin with, just because he was kind of not the greatest of people. Like, I don't remember what specifically, like, tipped me off to that, but I loved Alice. I loved their, like, different powers. Like, Alice could see the future, and then there was, um, Edward who could read minds, if I remember correctly. Again, ten years. Um, actually, it has been about ten years since I last read it, so I should probably read it again this year and see if I still love it as much as I thought, because I still have them, because I plan on reading them again at some point, because to me they were good books besides the sparkling and the Edward being kind of a tool. Um, I always was Team Jacob, which I hate the fact that it was like, Team this, Team that, and now it's like become a thing, like Team Gale, Team PETA, and I'm just like, meh. I mean, I do like PETA, but I'm not about the teams, um, but I did like Jacob better. Anyway. And people, one thing that I, I, let me rewind a little bit. A couple years ago, um, I applied to work at a bookstore. And um, I won't tell you which one, but I went for an interview and I also got a second interview, but they didn't end up hiring me. That's not the point of this point though. Um, I learned by talking to one of the um, hiring managers when we were doing the interview. Um, Cause I think she said something about like, do you like Fifty Shades of Grey or, um, I don't remember what it was, but she made a good point, and I've actually seen the point on Tumblr as well, is, um, there are some pretty controversial books. Now, there are some pretty crazy things, like Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm not a fan, I've never read it, but I'm not really, you know, it's not my cup of tea. 
Um, but she made the point that that book got more people into reading. And it was kind of like the Twilight series, I think, when I was in middle school. It got a lot of people reading. Um, so even if they aren't, you know, the best books in the world, they have their flaws. Um, the fact that they got people reading is really good because I did read a vi uh, read a video, saw a video where they had talked about how recently YA is better than ever. There was once a time where it was like that was barely a thing and it was actually like dying out. Um, and books like these that got everybody into reading and were made in movies and got more people reading just improved it and. As not great as Twilight could be, you know, it still helps me to continue to read. I read a four book series, which is not one that I have done before. Before that, it was the three, uh, the three books in the Darkest Powers trilogy. And then from there, it actually kept going. So I read more manga, and then eventually, I found Throne of Glass which has become one of my all-time favorite book series, and I love Selena Sardothian's character, and I wish I could be more like her. Because even though she's been put in this terrible situation, and has a really dark past, or not really dark on her part, but like, it's just not a happy one, um, you know, she can be confident in herself as much as she can. You know, she is skilled and violent things, but she's also not bad at other things, like dancing, and, um, you know, she's meant to do something great, and for me, somebody who's always just felt pretty average, I would love to be somebody like Selena Sardothian. Although I don't think I'd be going into the assassin business, but still, I did really, really enjoy the series, and the last book is supposed to come out this year. But we do not have a cover, and we do not have a name, and apparently she's been working on a full book just about Kale. And everybody's like, oh yes, I want it! And I'm like, I just wanted the last book, to be honest. I would love for there to be more to the story, don't get me wrong. I was just, I've been waiting for it, and the possibility of having to wait longer because she's been working on this other thing is just kind of like... It's kind of like when... I don't even know if you guys would even be able to relate to this, but Pierce the Veil was supposed to release an album. They finally released it, like, last year. Um, but they were supposed to release an album, like, a couple years before that. And it was a couple years late, and I was just sitting here like, are they even ever gonna make another album? Um, so... I'm hoping it's not gonna be that situation where I'm gonna have to wait till 2019 just to get the sixth book for the... Throne of Glass series, um, but I, that, that's another gateway book. Actually, from Throne of Glass, I started to read a lot more. Most of the books you see on my bookshelf are because I read Throne of Glass, and I'm not saying, like, they're all high fantasy. I'm talking about just the um, fact that they were all YA is kind of what got me into reading. And honestly, having a library that I could go to um, helped a lot with that, because I'm very picky with what I buy, um, so most of the time I won't read a book unless I've read it. Uh, but the library is what got me into, for example, The Darkest Mind, which is up there, and it's also one of my favorite book series. It got me into The Legend Trilogy, which is over there. Um, I'm trying to think, what other books? I think it even... no? I missed a gateway book, and I feel like a terrible person because I'm even wearing a shirt. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned them on here before, but a gateway book series for me was also The Chronicles of Vladimir Todd, um, which is a book series I read in middle school and was obsessed and attached to, and Vlad was actually like a friend to me throughout middle school when I was going through some kind of difficult things, um, and even a little bit of high school. And, uh, one day I might do, like, a full discussion on it, maybe. Um, but that is another gateway book. And actually, what introduced it to me, believe it or not, was the Nickelodeon magazines that were advertised on Nickelodeon. My parents actually, I, got, I actually talked them into getting them for me. And they did. And one of the little advertisements on, like, the inside, like, I don't remember what else was on the page, but there was this little thing, and it was a vampire 
like smiley like on my shirt and this boy in a hoodie which the smiley's on his hoodie um and it was it says something like eighth grade bites blah blah and i was like what is this i need it and i actually think i got it from the library before i bought it um in a bookstore maybe um but that's what introduced it to me and i was like i need this so i got it and i read it and i got the next one and i read it and i just so now I have all of them. I'm only missing one book from the Slayer Chronicles, which is like a, um, like a, it's in the same universe. It happens about the same time as the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd books, but it like also kind of, yeah. Um, I'm only missing one of those. That's it. Um, I want to say I also got the Raven Boys, like the first book from the library, but I wouldn't quote me on that. I might've just bought it. Um, I did get Lunar Chronicles from the library when I started reading. Um, what else? I know there's quite a few. Me. I don't know. Um, but, yes. So. Having a library helps. Maybe I'll talk about libraries one day. Um, but yeah, those were the gateway books. Those were the books that got me into reading and kept getting me into reading. Um, you know, Scholastic Book Fairs. Actually, I think I might have gotten Vladimir Talk from Scholastic Book Fair. If I remember correctly. I don't remember, though. Over ten years, guys. Um, but, yeah. So, that's, that's my Friday video. Um, I'm currently reading Red Queen, which is actually right, chilling right here. I am a little more than halfway through it. See? That's, that's the end, right there. Um, rereading it has been pretty crazy for me because I still really enjoy it but it's weird because the ending of this book like knowing the ending of this book and rereading it I'm like because there's a specific character that I adored throughout this whole book and then when I got to the end I was like no 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 you can't no you can't do that to me um so yeah um, yep. Anyway, so this is what I'm currently reading, and I'm not going to have a book talk on this. I did finish The Night Circus, and I do have a review up for it, but I have not posted a book talk. Oh, no, I have a book talk video for it. I do not have a review for it online, on like in Goodreads or on Tumblr, just because it just... I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it was magical and beautiful in some ways, and other ways it was kind of boring and not what I expected, and I'm kind of a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it could be me, or, you know, it, I don't know. So I, I decided to just do a video and try to work out my feelings, that I still don't really know. Um, but I'm currently reading this, and then when I finish this, I will be reading Glass Sword, and then I need to go get King's Cage. And then I will have read the series, I can do a series discussion, and done! Um, it looks like, just based on the poll that I have put out on Tumblr, um, cause a couple years ago in March, I did the Infernal Devices read-along, um, with Whisper of the Silent Winds and my friend Sasha. And last year, I did it in January, pretty kind of spur of the moment, and I did a Darkest Minds one. And the... Um, Infernal Devices went a whole lot better than The Darkest Mind. So, I think I'm going to finish planning next month's read-along this month, and I will try to do a like announcement video for it, like the others. Um, so I'm not going to tell you which one it was, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a whole series to read um, next month. So if you're interested in participating, look out for that. Um, if not, I will see you guys sometime next week. Maybe the only day I might see you is Friday. Um, but I love you guys and it really means so much when you watch my videos. I will see you very soon. Happy reading and have a great weekend.